Hello, I'm Rex Childhouse, and because things on the internet uh, seem to lose their date reference, today is Sunday, March 19, 2023. On Saturday, March 11, 2023, we were in Tucson, Arizona, uh, and we had had lunch and had visited the uh, Southern Arizona Transportation Museum, which is a railroad museum, and, and how Tucson kind of developed. And uh, got in the car, we still had time left, and opened up Google and said museums. And one of the things that happened was, uh, one, of, one of the selections that came up was the Franklin Car Museum. So um, I've worked on Franklin engines as an aircraft mechanic. Uh, they, were in a, they were in a fair amount of helicopters and uh, some fixed wing aircraft. They're air cooled, really good engines. So we told Google, uh, get us there. So here's some information on the uh, Franklin Car Museum. It's a bit out of the way. Uh, if you're following your uh, GPS or Google, um, it'll get you there. And uh, you, you just you don't expect the museum to be there. It's it's uh, literally on a side street in Tucson. Uh, nice place to be. And. Uh, Herbert H. Franklin um, is, is the guy who's responsible for the H.H. H. Franklin Manufacturing Company and their subsidiary, uh, the Franklin uh, Cars. And uh, Franklin first started producing cars, I think, in 1901, and then with the Depression in the 1930s, I think it's 1934-ish, um, the company went belly up due to the Depression, um, but, but made some good cars. So here's some history on uh, the Franklin Car Company itself. You can read that by hitting pause on the uh, video. I'll let you read that. I thought it was kind of cool. And then another player walks in. It's Thomas H. Hubbard. And Thomas H. Hubbard uh, comes into Tucson uh, for uh, lung problems, for respiratory issues. Uh, grows up there and uh, becomes a mining engineer and has a fascination with the Franklin cars because uh, his family owned one and he started buying these things and he built a, a company to uh, service them. Kind of cool. So I'm going to walk you through um, some of the photos and I usually have the signage for these guys. So uh, the first one comes up to be this 1905 runabout with rear entry, rear entry Tonto. Uh, kind of uh, that just happens to be my wife um, a really interesting car I, I thought all of these were interesting and they're kind of cool and what I when when we got to the museum as you saw in the information for the museum it has some pretty restricted hours we had about 50 minutes left uh, curator was really nice and uh, he said uh, don't worry about it uh, you know yeah we close at four but uh, if you're if you're wrapping up your your visit uh, that's that's fine we'll stick around we still felt rushed uh, we stepped from the 1905 to this 1908 half ton capacity steak truck and uh, when you look at uh, the restoration work on these vehicles it was perfect I wonder if they're actually operational um, chances are they might be we step off to a 1910 model G touring car uh, unrestored uh, original 6300 miles uh, I drive more than that in in a year but um, you know at one time uh, if we were logging 8,000 miles on a car just because of the way it was uh, at that time uh, that was kind of high uh, the grocery store was half a mile away when I was a kid we didn't drive the car up there we walked that's what you did Really interesting car. Um, air-cooled engines as a general rule. I think they're all air-cooled. Uh, lots of mechanical stuff, uh, lots of innovative stuff. Um, interesting instrument panels as we go through these things. Unfortunately, being rushed, uh, I was trying to get uh, my normal uh, on a museum visit is I take the sign, I take the uh, object that the sign relates to and I, I try to uh, keep them correlated because I was in a rush. I kind of screwed it up. So if some of these don't match, uh, sorry about that. A 1918 model 9P touring car. Uh, purchased new and uh, um, okay. Um, interesting 
interesting design uh, as cars go and I set these up chronological or as close to chronological and, um, and, and as you'll see they get more and more modern looking as we're going. Kind of cool, uh, interesting instrument panel. A lot of the instruments were in the center of the panel rather than in front of the driver. So you kind of had to look uh, down and right. So, and, and manual shift. So most millennials aren't going to steal these guys. A 1923 Model 10B Rulang Coupe, I think was is how it would be pronounced. And uh, another interesting car. I like the way the uh, the hood, the grill, whatever, uh, keep the airflow for air-cooled engines. The helicopter engines and aircraft engines that I worked with that were Franklin's were all air-cooled. 1924 Model 10C sedan. And I, I like the fact that uh, the, the museum tells you where they got them. So uh, kind of cool. This kind of looks like a, a 1930s car, uh, 1920s, 1930s car. Um, it's got that typical squarish uh, style that we're familiar with. And if you look on the walls around this, uh, there's a lot of signage around, a lot of photos around the museum, which makes it really nice. The museum's in four or five different buildings. Uh, the cars are spread out. Um, they're not chronologically placed. I'm not sure what logic there was in placing them. I think it was, if we got room, let's put it there. 1925 uh, Model 10C sedan and um, back to that squarish uh, uh, 20s, early 1930s. Um, we're we're going to keep things simple. We're going to keep the angles as, as square as we can. Interesting. 1925 Series 11A sports coupe. Uh, now we're getting now we're getting into fancy. Now we're getting into uh, streamlined. Now we're getting into stuff that uh, uh, looks looks really cool. Uh, and all of it looks cool, and it's beautifully um, restored, maintained. Um, so that was never an issue. And the nice thing was the hoods on a, on several of them were open, so you could see the engines. 1926 Series 11A Sport Touring. And uh, the upstyle upstyle touring car with a second adjustable windscreen for the back seat passengers, kind of cool. That's my wife standing there. Uh, this probably would have been driven by uh, somebody like a chauffeur. And uh, um, th this, I would I would love to have this car sitting in my driveway. I would drive it to uh, drive it to town just to just to get the looks. Uh, beautiful car and uh, whatever. Here's one of the signs that we found and I, I put it in the in the stack with the 1920s um, so I should probably uh, play with this a little bit but it doesn't do me any good and, and you can see how squarish and, and the different types of bodies uh, that they had available to, the, to them. 1927 uh, Model 11B sedan uh, donated to the museum uh, by uh, Hank Maxwell Manuel, uh, who owned it for over 50 years. Um, this car, uh, it's got a desert water bag. Fill this up with water, you put it on the front of your grill as you drive, the air actually keeps the water cool. And uh, so you had something cool to drink if you got stuck. 1929 Model 135 uh, convertible coupe. Uh, a gentleman's car, a golf bag door. Now, I unfortunately being in kind of a rush, um, I, I didn't get to read the signage because we were trying not to overdo our stay there. This is a beautiful car. These cars were all beautiful and as we go through the years they get more and more stylish over what we would refer to as stylish. Here's the back seat of that car, the rumble seat. Kind of cool. A 1930 uh, Duoville Duo, sedan, uh, and they give you information. This car initially cost five thousand dollars, and uh, it was known as a gentleman's sedan built for export market. So uh, at that time, it was thirteen hundred and seventy-six um, pounds, or five thousand dollars, 
which would have been an expensive, very expensive car in the 1930s. But it is beautiful. It's big. I uh, love the way the floor, the uh, running boards are set up. Um, beautiful engine work on this. Here's the data, the data plates in, on this car and available. Beautiful. This is absolutely. I, I, I'm hoping these cars run. 1930 model 147 Pirate Phantom. Um, different idea. Uh, it talks about how they started bobbing the fenders, making them more stylish, uh, kind of cool. Um, there, there's not a car in this museum that I wouldn't like to have in my driveway. I just couldn't afford it. But uh, as we're going, we are showing the increase in styling towards what we would refer to as modern. 1931 Model 153 Deluxe Town Car. Uh, interesting history. It was evidently started as a 1929, then became a 1930, then a 1931. Uh, and the factory issued new serial numbers and it was used by uh, Mr. Franklin as his business car. Interesting concept. Cost $5,500. Uh, these are expensive cars. Beautiful car though. It looks like it might have been driven by a chauffeur, intended to be driven by a chauffeur. It looks like it came out of an old movie, quite honestly. 1931 Model 153 Speedster. Now we're getting into some styling. Uh, all these cars, in my opinion, have beautiful styling. This car glitters. Uh, th these cars were all very well maintained and uh, absolutely beautiful work. 1931 model 153 sport fathom uh, originally built uh, a one-off custom body built by uh, stillman f kelly the second of lexington massachusetts or built for him beautiful car absolutely beautiful 1932 model 163 deluxe pursuit uh, true dual cowl dual windshield design and uh, there's a windshield as you look at it there's a windshield between the front seat and the back seat uh, might as well keep those people comfortable back there uh, love the width of the running boards on this thing um, let's let's get comfortable beautiful restoration work on the dash uh, really nicely done dashboard back seat um, and you got it got to bring your luggage along so uh, custom-made suitcase to go with it this was a beautiful car nineteen thirty two model sixteen hundred v twelve sport phantom and uh... cost on this one new um, it just says dash five beautiful car again um, these these are big cars they're heavy cars and that v twelve sitting underneath the hood nineteen thirty three model 183 Olympic convertible coupe and with the Olympics being held in Los Angeles about this time frame uh, cars started picking this up and uh, this one only cost fifteen hundred dollars um, so we're getting down into uh, probably mass produced instead of custom produced cars it really looks beautiful here's the uh, dashboard for it little bit a uh, little bit more classy but we're still staying with all the instrument pa instrumentation off to the center of the dash 1934 model 194 club sedan and uh, got the luggage rack on the back got the the uh, back trunk area uh, this is this is another big car um, the front I, I love the slopes that they put on these uh, make them look uh, make them look fast make them look aerodynamic 1934 model 173 th uh, v12 club brome 
um, four inches. The gorilla on this car is four inches taller than any other manufacturer at, manufactured at the time. It's also the eighth of the last series of uh, 17 of the series 17. So I'm not sure how that fits in. But when you look at these, um, it, they are beautifully restored. They're beautifully styled. These were classic cars. Now we get off into uh, 1942. The Franklin Car Company folded during the Depression, 1934. I think it's in one of the one of the signages th uh, things. Where I come up with is I know them as the air-cooled aircraft engines, and we have a couple of air-cooled aircraft engines sitting there, and some information about the um, aircraft that they were in. In helicopters, it's not uncommon to have these in a vertical mount, and they have an interesting oil system because they are in a vertical mount. In fixed wing, they're in horizontal mount, like this 1946 guy is showing. Um, I've never heard anybody complain about uh, the Franklin aircraft engines, and there's quite a few of them running around. There were, anyways. A lot of pictures around the museum of uh, Franklin materials. So one of the things that uh, that happened just out of a fluke, one of the individuals that was um, sitting there at the museum uh, had this beautiful, and I mean beautifully restored Corvair, and uh, we got to look at it. Uh, really nice job, uh, well maintained. He was nice enough to allow us to take his picture with it, and uh, and he took our picture with it. I've loved the Corvair. My dad loved the Corvair. He thought it was a great car. Uh, neither one of us nor this guy thinks very much of Ralph Nader. But um, th this was a car that was designed to get mom to and from the store. It was not designed for the highway and uh, it's safer than most cars. Uh, but Ralph Nader had a beef with it and uh, and they yielded to him. I have a few pictures that I don't have good signage for. Um, I'm not sure if this was a car engine or an aircraft engine. I suspect it was an aircraft engine. Not really sure. It's an interesting installation. So, and, and there are several articles around here from newspapers uh, about the uh, Franklin engines and the Franklin Company. Uh, I'll let you look at them. There's a difference between turbocharged and supercharged. The Franklin supercharged, they are mechanically driven compressors. Turbocharged are gas driven compressor, compress, um, compressors. Uh, my preference and uh, the aircraft I flew if they were supercharged they had better response if they were turbocharged It's called turbo lag Kind of uh, interesting there's an article about who Franklin used uh, to advertise their materials and they went to the aviation pros uh, the known people This is a picture of the Franklin uh, car manufacturing company. It was not a small installation so uh, the signage uh, around the museum, uh, kind of cool, kind of really nice, and uh, kind of you get kind of caught by surprise. And then there's a few miscellaneous things. Um, hey, you know this is uh, this is what we get to start out with, and here's just some of the miscellaneous stuff that we have uh, sitting around the museum. Uh, we ran through the museum in probably 50 minutes. And uh, just because I'm a car guy and I like the detail to take detailed photos, uh, if I would have had my preference, uh, I would have probably spent two hours there because I would have shot the sign for the car, shot the car from several angles, uh, made sure that the sign, the, the uh, pictures were good, and then moved on to the next car. I didn't have that time because I didn't want to push our the uh, courtesy that we uh, got from them. The Franklin Museum, I think it's a $10 admission and a uh, nice place to go. I really enjoyed the trip. And to wrap this up, uh, this was a Franklin engine. Uh, it's the same one that's uh, shown in, inside, uh, well restored. This one sitting outside, wonder what it's uh, sitting there for, but uh, it's a Franklin air cooled engine, a uh, big one and probably uh, based on the other display probably an aircraft engine 
And then there was some non-Franklin stuff in there. Uh, here's a 1930 Chevrolet special sedan. And a uh, uh, guy bought it when he was in high school, owned it for 62 years, restoring it in the late 1990s. Kind of cool, beautifully done. And we shift off to another one, which I've just got to scroll over so I can read it because it's a Packard. And uh, there was a Packard sitting in there. A 1924 Packard Model 143 7 passenger touring. Purchased new in Tucson as a wedding gift for Isabella Greenway, uh, Arizona's first congresswoman and founder of the Arizona Inn. Uh, beautifully restored. So, um, the Franklin Auto Museum, Franklin Car Museum, uh, absolutely, absolutely a great place to go. Uh, really enjoyed the tour. Really nicely um, portrayed uh, displays. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.